Hello, welcome back. Matt Osborne from MrLike.com. Now, if you saw my last video, I was talking about the Limix S5 and how I was tempted to get the Leica SL camera. Now, I have some good news. Following the last video, I went out and bought an SL, but it's not the modern Leica SL. It's actually the 1968 Leica Flex SL. I'll bring up a few photos that I shot of my Leica Flex SL while testing different lenses. So today's video is a quick overview of the Leica Flex SL and then also comparing the Leica Flex SL which is a SLR camera to a Leica M3 rangefinder camera and also the Leica Flex SL against my Nikon SLR cameras and Minolta SLR cameras just to give you an idea of the size and kind of build and things like that. Okay let's get started. So first of all, what is a Leica Flex SL? The Leica Flex SL was actually the second SLR camera released by Leica and the SL stands for Selective Light for the Selective Light TTL metering. The first SLR camera from Leica was actually the standard Leica Flex which was released in 1964, four years before the Leica SL which I have. So in chronological order you've got the standard Leica Flex 1964, you've got the Leica Flex SL 1968, Leica Flex MOT 1972. MOT was the, the Leica Flex that was designed to have a motor attached to it. In 1974 came the Leica Flex SL2 and then in 1976 Leica teamed up with Minolta to release the Leica R3 and then following the R3 you've got the other Leica R models right up to the Leica R8. I won't cover the Leica R camera so much in this video but we will look at some of the Leica R lenses. So what can I tell you about the Leica Flex SL? So if we first look at the top of the camera, you've got shutter speeds from bulb through to a maximum of two thousandths of a second. You also have a flash sync speed of 1 over 100. On the far right of the top plate, you've got your shutter counter, which automatically resets when you load film. On the top of the prism, you have a cold shoe rather than a hot shoe. This is the same as a Leica M2 or a Leica M3. And on the top left of the top plate, you have your film rewind crank. And below that you have the dial for your ASA or ISO to set your film speed. The Leicaflex SL viewfinder has 93% coverage and gives a 0.9 magnification with a 50mm lens which is very similar to a Leica M3. The Leicaflex SL viewfinder is said to be the biggest and brightest of the SL and Leica R cameras. And in the centre of the focus screen instead of a split prism you have a circular micro prism. The camera has a centre weighted TTL light meter and the centre weighted spot is the same circle as the micro prism. So if you're trying to meet accurately, fill the circle with the area that you're trying to gauge the exposure for. The light meter in my camera doesn't actually work, so I was able to get a cheaper copy of the camera. For those of you buying a Leicaflex SL with a working light meter, you have a needle on the right hand side of the viewfinder. I guess a very simple version of something like a Nikon FE2, but without all the numbers. It's literally just a dial and a dot on the top, and you have to line up the needles. As I say, my meter doesn't work, so I'm probably not the best person to tell you about the light meter in this camera. On the front of the camera, you've got your ports for your flash. The red button is the, your lens release. Early copies of this camera have got the red button. Later versions have got the silver button, as I understand it. Next to that, you've got your depth of preview button. So say you're shooting at f4, you press that and you'll see the depth. And then next to that, you've got your self timer. I've got film loaded, so I can't show you how it's going to work, but it works like any other self timer. I'm using the camera here with the Summicron R50 f2 lens. To me the best feature about this camera is the film advance mechanism. It is the best I've used on any camera, even better than a Leica M3. Now, if you want to see how the lens removes, push the red button and twist and then there inside you can see the, the mirror for the, the prism. And then when you come to mount a Leica R lens you match up the red dots and twist. To open the film back you press the button and push up the way the arrow is showing. I can't open the back because I've got film in at the moment. Uh, when you finish your film you press the, the little dot on the right hand side and there you can see the, the battery cover and the tripod socket. It's probably worth noting these cameras take mercury batteries which are less easy to find so you may need to do some reading if you're going to use one of these cameras and plan to use the light meter. I've made it easy for myself by buying a camera that doesn't have a working light meter. So what else can I tell you about this amazing camera? They are produced in either black or silver chrome and these cameras are actually made at a loss. So the cost to manufacture like a flex was actually more than the price that like we're selling these cameras at. Like his pricing strategy was to sell the cameras at a loss and then make the money back on the, the R lenses. That gives you some idea of how over-engineered this camera is. If you're on the market for an SLR Leica camera, 
there's a strong argument that this could be the best of the SLR cameras made by Leica. It's roughly equivalent to the Leica M3 in rangefinder terms. The Leica M3 to my mind is the pinnacle of the, the rangefinder cameras and the SL is said to be the equivalent in SLR terms. Even when they started to produce the SL2, they were starting to make cost cuttings. So the SL is said to be the best of the bunch. For fellow Leica enthusiasts, if you like your well-built Leicas, such as the, the Leica Barnack cameras, the Leica M2, the Leica M3, then you may appreciate an earlier Leica SL camera rather than some of the later Leica R cameras. Over-engineered cameras come at a weight. This is one weighty camera. If you see my other videos, you'll know how much I love lightweight cameras. But when I pick this up, it just feels so amazing. The, the film advance, as I mentioned, is just the best I've used on any camera, but much better than all my Leica rangefinder cameras. Maybe I've got a good copy, I'm not sure, but it's just amazing. It's just so well dampened. Um, this film in, but I, I can advance it to show you. It just feels so nice to use. Yes, it's heavy, but it's so enjoyable to use. I think it's worth it for days when I don't want a super lightweight camera. If I'm cycling or running, this will not be my first choice and I'll probably take a Barnack camera. But for days when I'm just walking around, such as yesterday, I really enjoy just walking around with my belly and bag and um, frying off a few photos. I can't open the film back as I say, because there's film already in the camera, but it's the same as any other camera. You put the film in here, you drag it across, advance a couple of frames, ready to go. So yes, I forgot to mention the weight of this camera, body only, 770 grams, which is 27 ounces. If you compare that to Leica M3, they're around 560 grams. So it is heavier than a Leica M camera. Now, if like me, you've only ever used Leica M cameras and Leica M lenses, when it comes to the Leica R lenses, it gets a bit more complicated. I um, had to do quite a bit of reading to work out which lenses would work on this camera body. So here's a very quick summary of Leica R lenses. So the first Leica R lenses are called one cam lenses, and those are the lenses released with the standard Leica Flex, the first Leica Flex. Next came two cam lenses. Those lenses came with the Leica SL, and they work with TTL metering. After that came three cam lenses. Three cam lenses offer auto exposure, and those came with the Leica R3 camera. R3 lenses will work on an SL2, but it won't work on a SL. Following that came the ROM lenses, and those are the latest lenses, and ROM lenses have the electrical contacts, and they were designed for the Leica R8. If you want to use Leica R lenses on your digital Leica SL, for example, if you use the Leica L to R adapter with a ROM lens, the camera will record the EXIF data of any ROM lenses, but if it's a 3-cam, 2-cam, or 1-cam, it won't record any data. And I guess for completeness, there's also the l can lenses, and those lenses were made for military use. So they're probably less popular and you probably don't need to know much about them. So if you found this video because you're interested in the SL, you can use 1-cam and 2-cam lenses only. You cannot use 3-cam and you cannot use ROM lenses. So for me, I'm using the 50mm f2 and I'm using the 135mm f2.8 lens. Both of these lenses are older lenses. I've also got the 80 200 zoom lens but that's a ROM lens so that lens won't work on this body. So firstly for wannabe Leica shooters, if you don't own any Leica cameras and you're trying to decide whether to get a Leica M camera or a Leica R camera, the question is which one do you get? Now both systems offer different pros and cons, so I'll quickly cover those now. Like M cameras are smaller and lighter, and they tend to be much more desirable and much more expensive. I think M cameras are particularly suited to 35mm and 50mm photography, but some of the like M cameras offer bodies with 28mm frame lines right through to 135mm frame lines. The biggest drawback for me of like M cameras I would say for generally is the cost and secondly the close focus distance limitation of 0.5 meters. So what about like SLR cameras? SLR cameras are better suited for close-up photography, macro photography, telephoto lenses, so kind of the extremes closer than an M lens or further than an M lens especially. Obviously you can shoot anything in between but personally I'd probably use the like M cameras for 28 to 50 mil and I'd use the SLR cameras, the SL in this example, for 50mm, 90mm, 135mm and longer than 135mm. And then the second benefit is if we take the Summicron R for example, this will focus to as close as 0.5 meters. So for portraits, 
it's much more useful than say the Leica M3 was one of the older Leica 50mm lenses because the older lenses were limited to one meter so it's one meter versus half a meter in this example making this much more useful for portraiture. The biggest benefit I think by far of the SLR style cameras is they are much more affordable because they are less desirable so I managed to pick this camera up for a really low price it was kind of too low not to accept to add to my kind of like a catalogue of cameras. I think if you want like engineering at the lowest possible price points the Leica SL cameras offer an even cheaper price point than say the Barnack cameras which I discovered 18 months two years ago. So this is probably the benchmark for the cheapest possible Leica camera. It's probably worth mentioning the Leica R lenses are actually very popular for cinema photographers so the lenses probably hold the value better than some non Leica lenses but I find them really amazing for pictures. These are a few digital photos taken with Leica R lenses. So firstly this is the Leica Summicron R 50mm f2 and then these are shot with the Leica Almerit 135mm f2.8. So both of these lenses are used on the Leica Flex but I've not yet developed any film. Okay, what if you're on the market for an SLR camera and you're not sure which camera to get? I'm quite fortunate in that I've got a few other SLR cameras. I've got the Minolta X300, which is a really high performer at a really low price. I've got the Nikon FG20, another high performer at a low price point. And both these cameras are really small and really lightweight. And in terms of weight, the Leica Flex lens and camera combination is probably two times heavier than both the Nikon and the Minolta setup that I've got here. Obviously there are more solid built Nikon SLR cameras. Uh, personally I enjoy the FM, FE, FM2, FE2 series of cameras. But if you want something a bit more brick-like you could get the Nikon F4 or the Nikon F5. Those are really solid but I think the Leica Flex is now my new most brick like camera of all my cameras. So back to Nikon, Minolta versus Leica. Nikon's Minolta's that I use, but also Canon's and Pentax and any other SLR manufacturer will generally offer cheaper cameras, lighter cameras, smaller cameras, a lot more features, but not as well made. Personally, I'm used to split prism viewfinders, such as the Nikon FE2, for example, or the FG20, or the Minolta X300. All of those cameras are very easy to focus for kind of precision photography. But with that said, with a bit of practice, you can get used to focusing the Leica Flex. I just don't think it's probably as quick or as accurate to focus versus the Nikons with kind of all the extra features. For those of you that wear glasses, you can get dark just to fit onto a Leica Flex SL, but they're not very easy to find and they probably are quite expensive. That is a big plus point for getting a Nikon or say a Minolta. I use the diopters on my Nikons and I can see super sharp, but luckily I can see well enough to use the Leica Flex without a diopter. So the question is, would I recommend a Leica Flex SL camera? If you enjoy lightweight small cameras, I would say no. And that includes me, I do normally enjoy small lightweight cameras, but it is such a nice camera to use that I think it's worth owning a like R camera alongside an M camera so you can use the, the right tool for the right job. I think the like R lenses offer a different look to the like M lenses. I've really enjoyed shooting the R lenses on both the Leica Flex and also the, so the Lumix S5 which I'm recording on. I think for the price you probably won't get a better built camera for the money, would be my verdict. So for that reason I'll be keeping my SL. And lastly, what about price? Great news, it's not as expensive as many of the other Leica cameras and lenses I've reviewed on this channel. You can buy a Leica Flex SL for around £200 or $200. That's kind of starting price, so sometimes you can get them less than £200, but you can pay more than £200, depending on kind of condition and things like that. Just to give you some idea, I paid less than £200 for mine, and it was film tested, but the light meter wasn't working because I tend to meter by hand on a Sikonic light meter. That really didn't bother me and I was more than happy to get the camera at the, the lower cost. That's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and feel free to subscribe so not to miss my later reviews of the Leica R lenses that I'm using. Lastly, as always, a huge thank you to my patrons and sorry for the lack of videos. Uh, I'll try and get back to making more videos soon. I've just been testing lots of lenses and cameras and things, so I've been struggling a bit with time. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.